You don't get any funny intro. Yo guys and welcome back to the channel, Mutual United. The day after Chelsea lost the cup final against this team which I strongly do not like from Merseyside. The red team. I'm not gonna say their name because it has VAR in it, so what do you expect? Yeah, no fancy stuff. My thoughts on the game and everything that has been said, the, the media and Sky Sports, specifically Gary Neville, awful pundit, manager. Yeah, so without further ado, let's begin. I have a bunch of screenshots, which I will put obviously in the video. Gary Neville described Chelsea as blue billion pound bottle jobs as they were beaten in the Carabao Cup final by an injury hit Liverpool. Fair enough, injury hit. Let's just check out Chelsea's injuries. We have eight. Wesley Fafana, Reese James, two starters. Paddy Schill, probably another starter. Chukomeka over Gallagher, starter. Romeo Lavia, probably a starter. Kukureo over Chilwell, yes. Thiago Silva, if we play a back five, yes, starter. Leslie over Chukwu, fair enough, he's a young player, but injured nonetheless. Eight injuries. Liverpool, after the game, have... 12. Two injured in the game. So they had 10. They had two more injuries than us. The fact of the matter is that because their players are better who are injured. But you can't push the narrative of Liverpool injury hit when Chelsea have had minimum eight injuries all season. We have not once yet had a full healthy squad. Liverpool have. La, la. And it just so happens that in the final, they're, they're, their players are injured. It, in the English media, I, I'm really, really, I've had it with the English media. They, they are piss poor at their jobs and push whatever they want. It's disgracefully bad from Liverpool is the media's beautiful little darling. So now, what else? From Sky Sports, by the way. Already deprived of Trent Alexander-Arnold, who can't defend and is not a good player. Mo Salah, fair enough, their best player, and Darwin Nunez. Liverpool won the final with a host of youngsters on the pitch after 18-year-old Jaden Dand, 19-year-old James McConnell, and Bobby Clark, as well as Gerald Kwanzaa, who has played for them, 21, were thrown into the fray. Connor Bradley, who, again, has started for the... Got He's their best flipping player right now. Has had started the final in defense and Harvey Elliott, 20, played the full 120 minutes. But wait! There's more! In contrast, Chelsea fielded Enzo Fernandez and Moises Caicedo, both of whom cost over 100 million pounds, in the center of their midfield. Raheem Sterling, 50 million, was in attack, while Mikhailo Mudrik, who, who cost 88.5 million pounds, and 52 million pound Christopher Nkuku stepped off the bench. Malo Gusto, how old is he? 20 years old. Levi Colwell, how old is he? 21. Cole Palmer, how old is he? He's 21. Madawaki, how old is he? 21. Either Kaiseido, uh, yeah, Kaiseido or Enzo. No, Enzo is older. Kaiseido is 22. Throw him into the mix, is one year difference. Just because Chelsea's young players are more established than Liverpool does not make it any less kid versus kid. In all honesty. Media narrative, there you go. Carragher, football is about connections, not money. This result just tells you that football isn't all about money, he said. It's about getting the right players and creating a connection between those players, the manager and the supporters. Liverpool have that in abundance. There's no doubt Chelsea have quality, but they still haven't found that connection this season. Does he know who scored the winner? At one point, the most expensive defender in the world cost 75 million pounds. Does he not comprehend that? Here comes Liverpool spend money, albeit Chelsea spend more, but all of these top six sides spend money. You're a pundit who doesn't know about football. Make that make sense. Neville should, first of all, the people who probably know the most about football are who? Managers, right? Because tactics, you study the game, all of this. So Alex Ferguson, great mind, Pep Guardiola, Mourinho, I can name a bunch of people. All football managers, right? Gary Neville gets paid to talk about football when he knows nothing about football. You check his uh, record in, in management. Uh, how does someone who is clueless about the sport they played for, I don't know, 20 years, how does he get paid to talk about football? Anyway, Sky Sports itself is awful. They just push whatever they want, talk nonsense, and they get paid to do it. So moving on to the ratings. I haven't even gotten to the game. I'm just debunking all of this media nonsense. They gave Caicedo a four. What? Wild challenge on Gravenberg in the first half, who was then forced off injured. Untidy in possession and even scruffier out of it. Looks like half the player he was at Brighton and in need of a serious reboot. He misplaced four passes in the final. Out of how many? Let, let me see. Out of 68. Yeah, he was um, untidy in possession, right? I'm amazed that the pundits can watch and commentators can watch the game and still come to this conclusion. Genuinely. Enzo Fernandez, they gave him a five. 
completely fluffed the chance early in the second half when set up by Gallagher and looked shaky on the ball. Regained a bit of composure in the second half and was typically combative, but questions remain as to whether the expensively assembled Enzo Caicedo pairing in midfield is working for Chelsea. Jury is out. Shocking. Shocking. Not, 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 not Enzo, the, the media. Shocking. Conor Gallagher, guess what he got? Seven. So Caicedo got a four. Enzo got a five. And the player who missed two big chances and hit the post got a seven. All action displayed, particularly in the second half. At times he glided past... At times he glided past players as if they were not there and showed purpose and drive to affect the game. Hit the post and blasted a couple of further chances off target. Alongside Palmer, Chelsea's most industrious performer, or being withdrawn at extra time. I wonder what would have been written had Caicedo Enzo missed those chances that Gallagher did and hit the post. I truly wonder. This English bias, some of those misses. I, I didn't even get to the game. In 90 minutes, we played debatably better than them, but we should have won in 90 minutes. Extra time was awful. Can I blame Poch for that? I can blame Poch for not winning in the 90 minutes as that team was not good enough. Diaz was kept quiet by Gusto, their danger, most dangerous player, arguably. Nothing, nothing really to say. 90 minutes, we should have won. Extra time, we deserve to lose because with those unestablished youngsters, understand. Chelsea have youngsters and we play youngsters. With those Liverpool unestablished youngsters, we should have beaten them. Because our youngsters are 100% better than theirs. So there's no excuse for that. Yeah, nothing I could say. The media is garbage. Gary Neville, I don't know how you get paid to talk about football. Uh, what else? Oh! I forgot about that. Yet again, we have another VAR situation where Jackson was ruled incorrectly offside. They're literally on the same line. How is he offside? But yeah, Jackson was given offside and Sterling's goal didn't count. I have people somehow, somehow complaining about Liverpool's goal when Endo... It people like... Genuinely, all of you people who, who complain about Liverpool's goal being disallowed, my coach, who's a Liverpool fan, said that's the most controversial moment of the match. How so? Endo is literally in an offside position. Blocks Colwell, who if he did, hadn't blocked, would have been goal sider Van Dijk to affect his free header. It, it's common sense. Genuinely, it's common sense. 100% correctly disallowed. I don't know what the complaint is. He certainly is because he holds off Rhys James. I think it's part of this free kick move. It was noticeable that Van Dyke was just doing that blocking roll at the back post. But anyways, that's the video, guys. Thanks for watching. Yeah, um, much love to everyone who doesn't like Liverpool. And peace. No, much love to everybody.